Good morning. Oh. Here I am. Send me. This weekend, um, well, yesterday, actually, because uh, it's still this weekend, um, yesterday I was uh, doing a teaching uh, away day uh, for a church in London, and I was teaching um, on uh, spiritual practice. And so when I saw that I was in the rota for this morning to preach here as well, I thought, hooray, another away day on spiritual practice. So um, that's what you've come for this morning if you didn't realize. Uh, the reading today is taken from John 10, and uh, we'll begin the uh, reading is at verse 22. And this is a really fascinating uh, story because actually it does speak very profoundly into our spiritual practice and how we work out in our daily life what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus Christ, what it means to be a disciple, someone who literally follows after the ways of Jesus. You see, the Jews came to Jesus and they didn't believe that he was the Christ. They knew he was Jesus of Nazareth, but they didn't know that he was the anointed one, the one who was going to be the deliverer that they had all been waiting for. And Jesus turns around and tells them why they aren't able to believe. And he says, because you don't believe on my works. You don't realize that what I'm doing is so extraordinary. It's speaking of a new kingdom. And he says, if nothing else, you know, look at what I'm doing and see that what I'm actually doing on the ground in the mud and the dirt is of another world. It's extraordinary. And they didn't see it and they didn't get it. And so they weren't able to believe in who he was. And then the second reason that he said they weren't able to believe was because they weren't his sheep. They weren't part of his flock. He said, you don't belong to me. You don't know me and I don't know you. You're not one of my flock. You don't belong. And he says that the belonging comes from hearing. He says, my sheep hear my voice. And when they hear my voice, they're able then to follow me. And they follow me in my ways. But if you don't hear my voice, I don't know you. And then you're not able to follow me. And so we see that Jesus is beginning to press into and point to the importance of hearing and following and how those two really uh, come together in our practice as Christians. As we practice being a Christian, as we practice being a little Christ, as we're following in his footsteps, hearing his voice is really important in following his ways. So I suppose the question that we've got to face this morning is, am I a sheep? Am I one who is part of that flock? Am I able to follow the shepherd where he goes or with what he's doing? Or am I off in my own little pen somewhere and, and not really aware of what that flock is doing over there? And so when that shepherd takes the flock up onto the heights or down to the springs or into the barren places or through a pretty rocky patch, you know, am I following that flock and that shepherd? Or am I over in my little pen somewhere having a nice little munch on the grass and sort of not doing very much? You know, it's very easy to be a Christian over here in a nice little patch of green and pasture and it, you can live and you can work out your days and it's all lovely in the sunrises and the sunsets, but you don't go anywhere. If you want to go somewhere in your spiritual life, and of course you do understand I'm talking in metaphorical terms, we are talking about going and growing and being better Christians, better followers. If you want to be that kind of a spiritual, spiritually led person, then it requires us to kind of get out of the pen and to follow. And that takes practice. That is what being a follower is all about. And Jesus didn't just say it in one or two places in the scriptures. If you start to look in the Gospels, he talks about hearing and listening and following in many, many places. And this theme runs through so much of what he says. So, for example, if you look at Luke 8:18, he says, Be very careful how you listen. 
in a sense, attend to it, work on it, think about it. How am I listening? Because he says in Luke, those who have will be given more. And whoever does not have, even that which he seems to have will be taken from him. And so what Jesus is saying, you know, you end up poorer if you don't listen to me. You end up without. You end up less well off as a Christian if you fail to listen. While those who do learn to listen and every little bit of listening gains more. And there's this wonderful uh, dynamic, if you like, that Jesus is pointing to us about increase, that the more you listen, the more you receive, the more you listen, the more you receive. And it's kind of this building up into a place of flourishing as a Christian. And that's what he wants for each one of us. He wants each one of us as a sheep in his flock to flourish. He doesn't want skinny sheep. He wants lovely, fat, full sheep who are able to follow him. And that means we have to feed on his word. And as I said, that takes practice. So spiritual practice, if you like, is about getting connected. It's about learning relationship. It's about learning who Jesus is and who I am and how we connect. And that connection is there for us every day if we want it, if we want to go somewhere, if we want to follow. And so it's about recognizing the voice of God, recognizing his voice as against our voice, recognizing the voice of the enemy in doubts and fears and uncertainties and worries and lies and shame and accusation, learning the voice of our flesh in complaining and discomfort, in annoyances, in greed, in lusts, in comforts, in the pull for more, or it's learning the voice of the Spirit who leads us into truth and speaks of a way of life that is aspirational, inspirational, engineering, creation, one who takes us into the promises of God, dreams, visions, into a creative way of being. Not necessarily being super special, but about being inspirited matter. That's what we're after. Now, I'm going to give you two ways before we do our spiritual practice this morning. The quick sort of lighting on these quickly. The first obvious place is we have to listen through scripture. We have to listen to what Jesus tells us in the Bible to do. If we're not doing that, then I think that's a very good place to start. So if there's lots of stuff in Jesus, uh, Jesus' words, start with, say, the Sermon on the Mount, go through it, look at it and think, huh, I don't do that, better do that, don't do that, better do that. And you go through and think, right, how does my life of following match up to what actually Jesus has already told us to do in black and white? So that's a really good place to start. And, you know, each one of us keeps needing to go back to the template of Scripture and think, where do I measure up? Where do I fall? Lord, prompt my conscience. If I'm sinning in any way, if there's something I'm not doing quite right, please prompt my conscience. Prod me. Check me on the inside so that I don't do that thing that steps outside of your will. So, for example, two days ago, I knew that I had this big day yesterday and I was out of sorts with someone or they were out of sorts with me and it just wasn't very pretty. And I just knew that when I was trying to prepare for my spiritual practice day, that um, this verse in Matthew kept coming up um, and it was about... If you have anything, when you bring your gift to the altar, if you know that your brother or sister has anything against you, it says, leave your gift at the altar and go. And I thought, oh, okay, that's pretty practical, actually. I better leave and go then. And and I did, and I I literally had to kind of leave what I was doing, drop what I was doing. It wasn't going to go anywhere. There's no blessing on it. There was no anointing on it. I had to leave my gift at the altar and go and sort out this relationship, and then I could come back. Isn't it great when we live in obedience to what God has already told us to do? Listening to his word can be very straightforward and very simple, but we just have to get on and do it. Second way of listening to God is by sensing what the Spirit is saying to us. Sensing through our our senses, our listening, our taste, our touch, 
our feeling, our gut, sort of listening happens down here in this kind of area. You kind of are drawn into something, sensing a pattern that might be emerging, spotting what God is doing around you. So, for example, if something comes up in the news and you think, oh, I ought to think about that, I pray about that. And then someone says to you the next week, oh, did you know that that was happening? I've thought about that. And then later someone else says to you, oh, I've really got this on my mind. Do you think, aha, three things. You start to put together a little bit of a pattern. Lord, are you asking me to be involved in this? Are you asking me to pray about this? Do you want me to get interested in this? Start spotting the way the signals build up around you. It's what someone might be asking you to do or drawing from you. It starts to be a pattern of things that give you a really clear indication of the way the Lord wants you to go or what he wants you to think about or what he wants you to pray about or who he wants you to pray for. All these things are led through our senses. And you can tell from my the verbs I'm using already, it's not only about oral listening, but it's about sensing, seeing, watching, spotting, attending to the things around us and saying, okay, Holy Spirit, are you trying to tell me something here? Watching how the dots connect and making those connections for ourselves. So there are two really kind of obvious ways for you about listening and working out how the Holy Spirit might be leading you into uh, discipleship and following. But really this morning, I just wanted to share with you a uh, spiritual practice. So would you bear with me in this? So much fun! (laughs) Yay! (coughs) Where is it now? Uh, (laughs) There's, um, I like just to call this um, drawing on the straw. And, you know, on its own, drawing on the, the straw is pretty meaningless. It's pretty dry. It doesn't offer anything. Frankly, it's single-use plastic, and it shouldn't be here. But anyway, that's another story. This is a straw which has a use, but when not put to that use, it doesn't offer me anything. It, it's frankly useless. It sits in my cupboard and does nothing. But when I take a glass of water and I actually put it into the water and I draw on the straw, all of a sudden I get a drink of water and I get fed and I am receiving some refreshment. But it required me to put in faith the straw into the water and to draw up. And it's a really good picture Actually, I needed that. It's a really good picture of what we do in our spiritual lives. We want to put our spiritual antenna, if you like, our spiritual straws into the things around us and draw up from them to literally say, Lord, I want to draw from this. What refreshment can you give me from this? What can you say to me through this? And the wonderful thing is that the Holy Spirit, the water, is present everywhere, in all things, all around us. We just don't realize it because we don't put our straw in and suck on it and draw it up as refreshment. And so this morning, I just want to do a little mini exercise with you where you get the opportunity to metaphorically, if you like, put your straw in and draw some refreshment up for yourself. And because sometimes it's really difficult to do it in, um, you know, in a church situation from the things out there, I'm going to give you something to draw from. Now, in your daily life, it won't be like that. No one's going to give you a card and say, oh, look at this. But in daily life, it might be the people you're sitting on a bus with. It might be what's happening in your workspace. It might be a picture on the television. It might be a book that you're reading or a poem or a piece of music you're listening to. All of these things around us are opportunities to put our straw in and draw up from the Holy Spirit. But as I said, this morning, I'm going to help you by giving you some cards from which to do it. So I'm going to give you each a card, or you're going to take a card, and I want you just to sit with that card in front of you. And when everyone's got it, I want, we're going to have a moment of quiet. It's going to go, I want it to be really still. And we're going to pray, if you like, that the Holy Spirit will speak to us from that thing which is in front of us. Just give us an idea or a word. It might just connect to a memory 
or it might speak of a relationship. It might bring up some pain or a bad idea and you think, oh, what's that, Lord? It may just give you an itch that you need to scratch. It might just prompt a thought, an idea, a picture that the Holy Spirit wants to sit with and for you to draw from. And it's as simple and as easy but as necessary as that. There, are, there is a bit of paper at the back on the table and there's some pencils, but there's also in the pews, pens and things. And I'm going to give you um, these uh, cards. So what, um, there's, if Jeremy, if you'd like to pass out that, for the people at the back, if you just want to give people a chance to take from the basket slowly, I'm going to put these on the back table. So maybe if the back half of the church would like to come forward, everybody get hold of a card or something that you can look for. I'm going to put these out on this back table here. So come up now. Just get out of your pews. You have to move. Um, And just come and just take something that catches your eye. Don't spend hours thinking, oh, is that me? Is that not me? Just grab something. There we go. And you can file back round then. Come out and take something and go back round. There we go. Grab just something on the table, something that just catches at your eye that you like, and pick it up and go with it. And, uh, and then there's a pencil and pen. Just, yeah, don't get wowed by the choices. Just be led. It's gut feeling, guys. This is the spirit. There we go. And lot, there's plenty, plenty of cards for everybody. So just grab something that you like, a couple if you need to, and then grab a pencil and a piece of paper and then thread back to your pew. If the thing you've got doesn't quite sit right, just get back up now and go in and, and just grab something or grab two. Just, just get what you need to do this. And it's really good in spiritual practice when we're just moving around, you're engaging your body, you're bringing your whole self into, into it. So just pick it up. It's random. I do want them all back, by the way. <laughs> Don't filch them. <laughs> Right, have we all, has everybody got at least something in front of them that they can look at? And now I want you just, and we're going to have a time of quiet, bear with me. I'm going to give us about five minutes to do this. And I want you to ask questions, things like, why did I pick this up? What what drew me to this? And then sit with that question and think, Lord, what are you trying to say to me through it? It might be saying something about you or someone else or something in your life, but just dialogue with the card in front of you. Just focus on it, only it, just for these few minutes, and then just draw out responses through in just quietness of your heart. Lord, what do you want to say to me through this, this morning? What do you, Holy Spirit, want to draw up out of this card into my life as a refreshing drink this morning? Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Time feels heavy in church, doesn't it? It's interesting. Well done. Thank you so much for sitting with that. It's an interesting thing, isn't it, that actually it's quite difficult to focus with the noise and traffic and things around us. And that's why it does take focus and time and practice. And that's also the reason why I think it's really helpful to pull together our listening with our seeing and our seeing with our listening. Because when you're focusing on looking at something, 
it helps you to, in a sense, tune your ears into what God might be saying. Sometimes it, when we're trying to listen to what God might be saying to us in the morning, if we're in our quiet time or we're in pr time of, uh, of prayer, actually, if there's nothing to focus on, sometimes it's, it's harder to, in a sense, clear our mind and to really receive. But actually, if you have something in front of you to look at, then actually then that creates an avenue through which the Holy Spirit can, can touch you and you can literally draw from that spirit realm, if you like, much more easily. So it's a really good starting place for spiritual practice. It's a really good kind of first step to start looking and seeing and listening, listening and seeing, seeing and listening. It's a good way in to contemplation. I just want to end with a verse to uh, encourage you. And it's actually from Revelation. And uh, it's, uh, it was, it's the other verse that uh, is set for this morning. And uh, it's, a, it's the bit where... They're in the front of the throne uh, in heaven, and the 144,000 are all praising God. And, and it says this. It says, For this reason they are before the throne of God, and they worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more, and the sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that such a wonderful promise for us this morning? That the lamb at the center of the throne will be our shepherd and he will guide us to the springs of water, the springs of the water of life, and he will wipe away every tear. And that is the promise that we can hold on to, each one of us this morning. God wants to be our shepherd, and he wants to lead us by the Holy Spirit to the water of life, that we can all live fully flourishing, refreshed lives. Amen.